Good evening everyone. How are you? Today is Friday, uh, Friday evening here for me, 6.30 Melbourne. And it is such a, been such an interesting day for me at work. Um, I was a little bit delayed because of the trains, but I'm so glad I made it in time for our training tonight. So um, I'm excited for this one. This is going to be so amazing. So I'm just hopping, uh, waiting for a couple of people to hop on. So let me know when you join. Give me a heart or emoji. Let me know that you can hear me, uh, that you can see me, uh, just so that we can get things going. So um, just one more minute waiting for everyone. And while we do that, I am just hopping onto my computer so that I can see this live. Let's see. If I can see it. Hmm. Interesting. This is the first time I'm using a computer to do this. So, and my Wi Fi seems to be super, super slow. Wow. Okay. That might not work so anyway how is everyone how are you going what's been happening on your side I just um, I've been wanting to do this little talk for quite a while now and I am just super super excited so if you can't watch this right now on the live please come in and hop in uh, on the replay and just hashtag replay so that I know you've been here watching uh, and I'd love to know uh, what your thoughts are, where you're from, what you're doing, um, and so forth. So, before we start this training, it's uh, it's a, quite a chunky one compared to my usual little chats, and I just wanted to quickly do a couple of um, house house rules. So, let me know if you um, when you hop on, give me hearts, emojis, and I'd really like you to create a space. Um, where you can absolutely absorb this training tonight. There's quite a bit that's happening here, but some of this information is super, super valuable. This is the kind of stuff that I share with my paying clients, and I really love to be sharing this with you tonight. So um, you'd also probably want to go and grab a pen. So maybe you want to do that in the meantime. And um, I will, while I'm chatting just about this, we will just wait a while. Um, and you'll also want to be staying on until the end because there is a super exciting announcement and that uh, will be coming at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that and I'm super excited for what's to come in and for this group. So absolutely excited to be here. As you can see, I'm like bubbling today. Um, so... Um, before we get into uh, our topic tonight, I thought I would share a little bit about me. So, my name is Estelle Kim Heath, and I'm an emotional eating coach. I help women who struggle with emotional eating um, heal their relationship with food so that they can uh, end the dieting cycle and just find food freedom. So my program is actually funny enough, also called Food Freedom. And um, yeah, just um, a little bit more about me. I've been married for 11 years now. I'm a dog mom. I am a yoga teacher as well. And so into my spirituality, my crystals, my moon rituals, as well as I am super into essential oils. I love them. I just think that they make such a big difference in your lives. Hi, I can't see who that is, but um, give me a wave, give me a thumbs up if you, so you can let me know that you can see me. Um, so happy to have you on board. Um, yeah, so I'll be using my notes tonight just so because there's so much information that I wanted to share and I really didn't want to leave anything off. So just um, just excuse me if I'm looking down. It's because I'm just like 
so excited to share this with you and I want to make sure that you guys get absolutely everything that you need to change your relationship with food. Okay, so as I said, um, uh, like, oh, actually I haven't said it yet, but like, um, I have a pretty great relationship with food um, today as we sit here, but it wasn't always like this. It was actually um, quite a painful journey for me, myself. I have a history of binge eating since I was a teenager. Um, binge eating, over restriction, uh, like re really extreme dieting, over exercising um, cycles that would go through, um, that I would repeat, rinse and repeat all the time. That was my story. Every single week I would have something else going on but the binges and the urges and the cravings was always there and oh thanks for the loves uh, I love these love hearts they're amazing um, so and basically one of my lowest points was one day one evening when my husband was away um, which I've realized now obviously working through my um, recovery journey uh, that loneliness is one of my massive triggers and uh, my husband my hubby was away and I just uh, already had a whole bunch of snacks and treats at work just being anxious that I'm going home to an empty house um, I ordered massive Macca's takeaways which I actually normally don't eat that kind of foods um, I ate the whole thing and then I finished it off with like two packets of Tim Tams and if you don't know what Tim Tams are they are the most delicious little biscuits uh, made in Australia and they are just so chocolatey and delicious you almost just can't help yourself like but they are super rich and I actually finished two packs of those that evening and I was absolutely distraught I was in tears I was ugly crying, like hugging my uh, my dog, Kaiser, and I was just beside myself. I was so disgusted in my behavior. I was so disappointed in how I felt in that moment. And I just said to myself, you know what, you are just never going to be happy because you can just not get a grip on your control around food. And... It was, yeah, probably one of the lowest points in my life and it was super scary and just, yeah, probably the turning point in my life as well because I was always into health and fitness. Um, I really had a passion for it, but um, I also had this problem on the side. So um, I'm telling you this because I have been there. I have felt that guilt and shame from overeating, blowing your diet. I have been there. I have been on the binge guilt merry-go-round probably a million times. I have tried every single diet out of the out, out there. I've tried every single exercise program out there. And let me tell you, it is just so heartbreaking when every single one of those have failed. And when they fail, hi, I'm not sure who's on now, but like, um, oh, hi, Mareika, how are you? Um, let me give her a wave. Um, I don't know, every single time I thought I would have um, the next diet would work for me, it just wouldn't at all. And for me, that was absolutely heartbreaking. So, um, Basically, that became my turning point and I was already in health and fitness and I was on my way to become a yoga teacher and I decided to become a health coach and help women who are struggling um, with this problem. Um, and in that, um, I found coaching and I found my own beautiful coach who's helped me through the solution. And... Um, Basically, I went on to becoming a health coach and I started helping beautiful women. And But then I realized there was definitely um, this calling for me to actually help women and beat this absolute struggle with emotional eating and binge eating and 
change their relationship with food for the better and that's why it's made, I've made it my absolute mission to help as many women as I can who struggle with binge eating and emotional eating and help them on the path so that they don't have to struggle as much as I did or for as long as I did. I mean, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, <laughs> but it's been a long, long time of struggling. And a lot of my friends and family don't know this. Like my husband didn't know um, some of the struggles I was going through. Um, so it's just been amazing for me to open up and share this journey with, with people um, who um, are friends, um, new people who I've met along the journey on, online. And it's just an absolute privilege to be here tonight and talk to you about changing your relationship with food. So, um, and okay, yeah, so did you know, little fun fact here, that 5.7% um, of Australian women um, have experienced binge eating somewhere along in their lives. And 4.3% of them have actually experienced um, extreme dieting. And those two statistics are actually very important because they are very closely related. You'll see like later on in my talk, uh, we will talk about um, extreme dieting and how, how that affects um, binges and uh, binge eating and emotional eating. Um, and another really scary fact that I came across was that 2.8 million Americans uh, suffer from BED, which stands for binge eating disorder. And binge eating disorder is one of the biggest um, eating disorders um, and it's growing by the day. So absolutely um, phenomenal statistics there. So if you guys like online, if you um, give me a wave, if you have ever found yourself at the bottom of a bag of cookies wondering what the hell is wrong with me, why can I just not control myself around food? Yes, absolutely. So are you ready to get off this binge guilt merry-go-round? And are you ready to change your relationship with food for good. I am so excited to be sharing this um, this with you because this is the stuff that I share with my clients in my um, latest program I've developed called the Food Freedom Program. So um, I'm super excited to be sharing some of the insider tips from that program with you here. And uh, towards the end of the video, I'll like, explain to you how you can find out more about it. Yes, Mareka says yes, she has experienced that. So, um, I am so glad you guys are here for this training and I'll be sharing the secret formula um, of changing your relationship with food for good. Amazing, Dona also says yes. There must be a delay because everything is coming a bit slow. Um, but just keep me, keep me posted if this is like a little bit... Um, if you guys, if there any, if there anything's wrong, if you can't hear me, let me know. So, first of all, what is re our relationship with food? So, a relationship is defined as the way in which two or more things or people are connected. So, with food, we depend on food to survive. And without it, like we won't survive at all. So there's that physical connection to food. But there's also, we depend on food to help us feel different things. We use food to celebrate milestones in our lives. We use food to comfort us. We use food to make us feel certain things um, or feel less of certain things like loneliness, like in my case. And so there's that emotional connection to food as well. And this relationship with food can get extremely messy. And uh, I really had to go and dig deep to understand why that was. And the reality is we are um, in 
we live in a society, no matter where you are in the world, um, or let me know if this is not your scenario, but we live in a world where thin is ide idealized. Um, we have models bombarded everywhere. We have thinspo, fitspo, inspirations all over Instagram. We have diets on every single advertised on every single Facebook page. When we scroll through um, every single Google shirt, there's some diet for something, and foods um, get compartmentalized into. Um, different they start get, like earning these labels throughout the industry and depending on what um, fad diet is out there food gets villainized or they get put into the good list so food gets labeled as good bad healthy unhealthy it gets labeled as clean unclean um, all these kind of labels start um, getting attached to food and this is not since it's not a new thing it's been there for years hi Marianne and these labels um, create an actual fear for us in food when we see uh, that like if we keep hearing that food is bad then we start fearing food and we actually fear calories and calories are actually there to fuel us that's all it is calorie is a measurement of how food will fuel our body so that we can sustain it but we have been taught that calories are bad food is bad fats are bad eggs are bad like you name it we've had every single expert in the market telling us that some kind of food is bad and what this makes us do is we start believing that when we eat these foods, even if it's a healthy food, like avocado is bad. So people start believing that when you eat avocado, that you are bad for eating avocado. So I just came like thought of this analogy. So what makes a person bad? Like we always label... Um, or we usually say that a person who's committed crime is bad. Uh, a person who's um, committed murder is bad. A person who's committed fraud or who has, um, you know, abducted children is bad. And now all of a sudden, we eat a piece of chocolate cake and we put ourselves in that exact same bracket does that make sense like how can we be like and all of a sudden we get so confused we fear food because like like what do we eat all these experts out there are telling us that everything is bad only thing that's good for you is celery juice apparently like <laughs> i don't know <laughs> um or oh, it's the kale and chewing gum diet um it's just like if you keep on listening and um, and sometimes we don't even have control over it. It's just bombarded like and it's all we see. So of, of course we start believing it. And then of course we start feeling so guilty when we eat that bloody piece of cake at morning tea. Um, <laughs> let me know if you can relate to this. But um, yeah, so... Food labels and labeling on food is just absolutely um, terrible. But then we also, um, what happens is we end up thinking, well, like the only thing that I really can eat is, is vegetables. So I'll eat my salad and my boiled chicken and then, then I'll be happy. And um, the problem is thinking that salad is going to sustain you um, is probably not correct for your body first of all um, but these massive starvation um, ideas come through where we like oh well you know like this week i'll only drink lemon water and like i'll be fine um, but what that does like to like to your body and your brain is that creates deprivation and deprivation um, 
to the brain means a serious threat to survival. Now you add hunger on top of that and your brain is going to tell you to eat absolutely everything and as much of it as possible because survival is at stake. So hello urges, if you've ever wondered where that came from, this is where we are. We fear food and then all of a sudden we over restrict extreme dieting and then we have these urges and eventually these urges are super hard to, um, to fight. They are at you the whole time telling you you deserve it. It's like you're going to die if you don't have it almost. Like every excuse to have it. You'll feel better if you have this. Uh, you'll, you know, you'll eat salad tomorrow. Whatever the case is, it's there the whole time. This little brain is jabbering the whole time telling you that you cannot live without a binge. And all of a sudden you can't fight it anymore and then you give in. So let me let, let me know if you can relate to any of this. <laughs> um, and then we also have um, this emotional relationship with food where um, from a very young age, um, since we were babies, we are comforted with food like there's no way for us to understand what I'm like when, when we babies we don't really feel emotions until a certain age and in that time um, we we do feel like we get scared um, and food does become comforting when we drink our mother's milk that's what comforts us makes us feel good um, but eventually what what should be happening is we we should grow up and we should learn what emotions are and how they feel and how to process them and then um, just process them and um, then like we shouldn't need to have food to comfort it but because it's always been what people have done um, that's how it is we as I said before we celebrate milestones with food we find comfort in food and it makes sense. Food, um, and especially carbohydrate-rich foods and sugary foods, release endorphins, that happy, happy feeling. So when you're eating that bad piece of cake, it makes you feel amazing. It makes you feel absolutely fantastic. Until probably five minutes later, and you're feeling guilty because now you've been bad. Um, and this is where the relationship uh, with food is completely, completely messed up. So hopefully this makes sense and you guys um, are following along. Let me know if you, if you have any questions, we will we'll answer questions at the end. So um, here's what I um, teach my, um, in my food freedom program and what I've been putting together and I'm super excited to be sharing this with you. So there's three steps that I've added into tonight's talk to um, help you um, end, end the, um, the binge guilt merry-go-round. If you're ready to climb off uh, that merry-go-round, then this, uh, these three little tips are going to be a game changer for you. And uh, I'm super excited to be sharing this with you um, and hopefully you guys this is where if you haven't got that pen and paper this is probably where you need to go and grab one quickly or if you're watching the replay pause this video and go and get it because this has been a game changer for me it's been a game changer for my clients even before I started writing my food freedom program some of this stuff has been shown phenomenal results so um, there is just absolutely no way that you're going to walk away from this training tonight without gaining some insights or some some knowledge and some tools that you can use to change that relationship with food and enjoy food and get off that damn diet cycle so the first um lay of the, the or the first thing that i usually um work on is 
practicing food neutrality. So food neutrality means that we take the emotion out of the food. So when you eat, you eat and you eat food and it tastes good and it nourishes your body, it provides you with energy. Whether it's good or bad, that food still provides you with the energy that you need. And that energy is going to nourish your cells in some way or form and it's going to um, move out the system, uh, move out what it doesn't use. Yes, yeah, some of it's going to get stored, but the reality is that's what food is. There's no emotion tied to it. It's not bad. I mean, you wouldn't eat bad food. I mean, in my opinion, bad food is the stuff that's gone off in your fridge for like months and you find you discover that squashed tomato <laughs> maybe that's just me <laughs> you discover that squashed tomato that's been in the fridge for like months um that's bad food and you don't eat you're not gonna eat that squashed tomato no so food is not bad food is just food so taking that clean um that's like I don't know, like keto friendly, like whole food labels off your food and just see food for what it is. Now, I know that's difficult because we keep um, hearing and we keep seeing in the media and wherever we are, like we hear it from our colleagues at work that, you know, um, this food is bad. Oh, I'm being so bad eating this piece of cake. Oh, I just can't help myself. Like, I just I'm being bad this weekend I'm gonna have a couple of glasses of wine um, and yeah so we hear it all the time but if we start practicing taking that neutrality away and silencing that inner food critic and leaving food critics to the actual food critics who go and taste in restaurants and um, that's for them to decide um, whether a food has a certain flavor palettes or whatever. It's not for us to decide whether it's good, bad, clean, or whatever the case. Um, so just taking that food, um, food labels off the agenda. The, um, what goes along with that is also stop judging what's on your plate. So again, we often like, oh, I'm just being so bad. Here, here I am. Like, I'm only eating cake today. Um, it just adds to that psychology, and um, it really is self-harming, especially when you come from a place where you are struggling with um, a disordered relationship with food. Um, this is where you can start just taking that out and just take the emotion because the moment that we say bad there's an emotion that gets triggered in the brain and we want to move away from that so um another one that i used to do is because i felt that everything was labeled good or bad um food wise i would judge what other people were eating so I would be like, oh, you know what? That is not good. She's going to like have blood pressure issues later on because she's eating too many chips or whatever the case is. Like, um, so stop looking at what other people are eating and focus what you are eating and take that label off, the food labels off. And the only label that's on there is if you're eating an apple, it's an apple. And... It, like if you're eating a, like a banana, it's a banana. It's not a good banana. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad apple. <laughs> so food labels, very important. So what, what do we focus on instead? If we are wanting to eat foods um, and we want to make sure that we nourish our bodies in an optimal way. We've taken off the labels, um, but now find foods that really make you feel great. You'll know what that food is. You'll eat a meal and you will just be like, oh my gosh, you will just want to jump for joy after eating it. It will give you so much energy. It will just make you feel absolutely fantastic. It's that food that makes you want to jump out of bed in the morning.
that is the food that you want to eat and the, um, the foods that make me feel that that gives me that kind of energy might not be the foods that like that might absolutely make you feel absolutely terrible so there's no real person that could tell you what foods to eat you need to figure that out for yourself and if you are going to be leaning towards optimal health then lean towards foods that give you that bounce in your step that makes you jump up in the morning versus the foods that make you feel sluggish and make you feel like you're dragging out of bed yourself out of bed and just being in a terrible space all the time so that's my number one tip for changing your relationship with food um, and number two is and this has been an absolute game changer for all my health coaching clients I've had so far and that is um, one of the top things that I work with in my, uh, with my clients in my food freedom program and that is honoring your hunger we've talked about this a little bit earlier but if you are hungry your body and your brain is going to start telling you that you need to eat because it's a threat for your survival. It is not, when you turn into that food zombie monster, it is not because you just can't help yourself and you just don't have control. That is because you have left your body and your mind to think that you are not going to survive. It's a survival instinct. If we didn't have that and we let our bodies go hungry, we probably, our human survival rate will not be, would not have been very great, right? So, nothing wrong with you when you get those massive food urges and binges. Um, and if you look back at most of those and you ask yourself what caused it or what happened, led up, to that incident you will probably find that you were hungry or you probably find that you ate something that did not give you that bounce of energy uh, and, and an hour later you were starving again so making sure that you always honor your hunger so how do we do that number one stop the extreme dieting <laughs> you guys will notice i am not a fan of dieting um, not because i was on diets for so long um, i used to think i just haven't found the right diet for me um, <laughs> and the answer for me was actually get off the freaking diets that was the actual answer number two so extreme dieting Extreme deprivation is not your friend, especially if you are struggling with emotional and binge eating. So make sure that you have always got food and snacks prepared and ready to go. Um, absolute game changer for, for me, for, most, for all my clients and most people when you see they've made changes in, your, in their lives. Um, they look healthy, they look sparkly, their skin looks amazing. Most of the, the time, those are the people, if you ask them what they're doing, they're like, oh no, well, you know, I'm eating more, surprisingly, and I'm still looking healthy, and some of them find weight loss, and everything else. So, um, eating more is definitely a lot better than starving yourself, and then binging out on 20 million calories, um, and then having the guilt and the shame and the absolute emotional abuse that you put yourself through afterwards. So, if you actually, if you are a person that ca counts calories, you go and count for yourself a day where you eat six to eight meals and you aren't hungry versus a day where you ate one meal or your cucumber soup diet and then um, you binged on everything you ate, like saw. Like, I'm telling you like the math is like gonna be insane and extreme dieting like the binges that come from that do not just last for one afternoon or one day you'll probably find you'll be in that binge cycle for a long time a couple of days before you can finally find control back hi Canwell 
So, stop, stop dieting and eat when you are hungry. Very important. And I know, it's, it's like, when I heard this at first, I'm like, oh, that's just, that's obvious, isn't it? Like, it sounds simple. But sometimes we don't need complicated. We don't need to go and count the calculate the inch of calories that we have to have and manipulate the macros or whatever the hell we're doing nowadays on our calorie counting apps. Don't need to do that. Just eat. <laughs> and eat foods that energize you. Now, number three is probably one of the harder ones especially when we in this relationship with food but this is also one of the biggest things and the biggest gifts you can give yourself um, when struggling with um, a, a disordered relationship with food and this one is practicing self-compassion now self-compassion is um, something that we probably as emotional eaters don't show ourselves at all um, if ever probably we've just we have never paid attention to why we binge or why we've been on this cycle or why we finished that whole tub of ice cream and we just carried on we're like oh well tomorrow i will be good and i will eat my salad right so starting to practice an understanding why you had that binge urge merry-go-round in the first place and showing yourself some compassion in that moment is one of the biggest gifts you can give yourself but it also takes that emotion out of the whole situation the brain loves emotion so the minute you add drama into the mix that guilt that shame that's flogging it arises emotions in the body and the brain loves it and it gets that reaction and it will keep feeding you that thanks for the hearts it will keep feeding you those thoughts so practicing self-compassion this will allow you to understand why you had a binge in the first place maybe you were hungry or maybe you felt an emotion that you were just avoiding and you didn't process it. Canwell says, great tips. Amazing. Okay. So, um, your body is either aiming for survival, like I've said, or it needs to process whatever you're feeling. It needs to understand what's happening. It needs to process what's going on. And by just avoiding it we are setting ourselves up for another binge urge situation so i've learned this really awesome um self-compassion break um from a woman called Kristen neft if you want to check her out she's amazing um and this is just a small little extract from her um from one of her meditations and so and this it doesn't have to be in a med form of meditation um but you can even just like just take a moment and just process this um little self-compassion break um whenever you have a gap um and especially when you find yourself on that binge guild merry-go-round this is the time to bring in this little practice so step number one is take a nice deep breath now i'm not saying take a deep breath because i'm a yoga teacher <laughs> of course i'm a yoga teacher but when you take a nice deep breath you take your attention away from what's the chatter that's happening in the mind and you also start calming down the nervous system and that is what you need in situations when you are in this binge guilt merry-go-round you need a bit of calm you need to calm down the nervous system so taking a nice deep breath and then say to yourself i am suffering 
and when you do that you acknowledge that you are going through something something is happening or something has just happened and you are actually bringing that attention to what's happening the second statement you say to yourself is um, this is really hard right now I am struggling and that um, helps you acknowledge that something is happening and that you are struggling the third statement that you make so you like as I said you can do this in a meditation or you can just say this to yourself and let yourself feel whatever's going on the third statement is it is completely normal to feel like I'm struggling at the moment everyone struggles at some point in time and what that does is it normalizes what you are going through which starts calming down the nervous system and it helps calm the brain down because all of a sudden it's not like oh my god what is wrong with me what 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 I am such a freak la 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 um, it starts calming that down when you tell it this is normal and then the fourth statement is it is completely normal to feel this way there are many people who are going through who, who are going through similar situations right now and what that does is you are humanizing what you're feeling and that just calms the brain down the body down everything but you've added that compassion into your situation and then if you have time and you've processed all this you can put your hand on your heart and then just say I forgive myself um, I, I wrote it down everything is gonna be okay and I'm doing the best I can with the tools that I know and there's your self-compassion piece that is beautiful it is and that is amazing it's amazing just doing this little exercise is just phenomenal so I'm so glad that I could be sharing that with you to today anyway those were my three big tips um, hopefully you got some value out of that so I'm just going to recap quickly so what have we learned we have learned that we depend on food and therefore we have a relationship with food we have learned that throughout um, society and what we've learned um, throughout the years what we see in the media um, that food get, gets labeled as right or wrong for you good or bad clean or dirty all those things and we have also learned that when we eat these foods that um, have a label that's labeled as bad we feel guilt um, and guilt is never good in any situation once we feel guilt we start making up for it by starving ourselves or going on the next best cleanse or whatever the case is um, not that I have anything against cleanses cleanses do have a place in in the world but um, not when we're trying to make up for something that we've eaten out of guilt um, not at all um, we've also learned that the minute we bring starvation into the moment we start um, we will start um, the body and brain will feel like we are deprived and it's going to think that there's famine on its way and it's going to force you to eat and that's what leads to a binge great so we have also learned three amazing tools that you can use to um, break free from this relationship um, uh, with food and the first one is um, practicing food neutrality so taking out the labels out of food honoring your hunger and practicing self-compassion
and these things are amazing and you will love it when you can start using them let me know when you start using them i would love to hear how they work out for you because they are just like such good 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 tips that um, i would like to share other things that you will probably still need to learn is um, understanding your urges knowing when they come on so that you can prevent them um, on um, understanding your internal hunger cues so that you can act on them fast so you don't get urges and then mindfulness practices so that you can pick up on your emotions so that you can process them before you reach out for that chocolate bar um, or that whole bag of chips. So those are the things that, that will probably be coming in some of my talks in the ne next couple of months. Um, but yeah, those are the things that you will just strengthen this process and these three tips um, in such a massive way. So I'll be answering some questions in a moment. So if you have any questions, um, I would love to um, hear them. So start typing away and I will look at those now. I'm sometimes looking at the side of my computer because all my computer's on the side and I thought I would be able to see some comments coming up. So, um, but while you guys are typing away, I thought I would s share my surprise uh, announcements with you and this is a first um, first announcement uh, and this is going to make the next three months for um, just like for women who are sick of the the binge urge cycle this is um, going to make their um, last uh, second quarter of the year so much better and um, I have mentioned a little bit before about my food freedom program uh, and today is the official launch date of my food freedom program and I decided to share that with this special group so that you guys can all know about it and so that you can actually start um, thinking about whether this is something that you would want to be involved in more. So what is the Food Freedom Program? This program is for women who struggle with emotional eating, who are done with the binge urge merry-go-round, who's ready to get off. You are done with feeling like you need to accept the body the way it looks for the rest of your life. You are done with feeling like you are on a slippery slope and you cannot get that grip and control over food. You are done with thinking that you are going to lose out on possibilities and opportunities in life because you cannot get your shit together when it comes to food. And this program has been built to heal that relationship with food. Um, so in, uh, in this program, uh, you will learn the tools to heal that relationship with foods. I give you a step-by-step -step program to start managing your urges so that you can prevent them and start feeling, uh, finding food freedom so that you can feel comfortable in your own skin. That's like absolutely amazing. I'm just so excited about this and like, like I've been through it and I know what it feels like to step on the other side and feel that just feel confidence in who you are as a person and just feeling good with the clothes you wear and everything like that you will also learn how to practice food neutrality so that you can start eating foods that you enjoy without the guilt and shame so um, I really wanted to launch it on this special talk because everyone who stays on to the end of this talk um, I'm offering you a special bonus and that bonus um, is a additional 30% discount off the already discounted price launch price if you decide to work with me after uh, after our food freedom breakthrough session 
So a free freedom breakthrough session is just a discussion where we sit and we figure out what's holding you back, what's craving you, creating your urges, and what you can do about it. Um, and this is such an like amazing life changing program. Uh, the results like so far has been phenomenal. My own results have been amazing. And I am just super excited to put this on the market and I'm super excited to launch that um, here. So if if you um, if you act on this today and you um, apply for a food freedom breakthrough session this week, and at the end of our discussion we decide to work together, I will give you that additional 30% discount um, on this amazing program. So I will put a link below um, to anyone who wants to apply. Just fill in the form and we will uh, we will arrange a time to have a heart to heart on changing your relationship with food. So any questions at this point in time? Anything anyone wants to ask? I know some of these topics are really, really um, sensitive and sometimes you don't want to ask questions in a public forum. So please, please feel free to private message me um, just on Facebook Messenger um, and we can have a discussion. I can give you some additional support or resources um, if you did not want to comment on this post. Oh. So if there's no further questions or anything like that, I will let you lovelies all go and have a beautiful evening. I'm going to go have a nice glass of wine now. It's fry yay. So <laughs> um, I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing weekend. Be safe. And I really hope that you found some value in um, these um, amazing tips that I shared this evening. Have a beautiful evening and I will speak to you soon. Cheers. Oh, there's a chat here that about like